Hi, this is Leah from ColouringQueen.net and today I want to show you a colouring book. Uh, it's called The Art of Laurel Birch and it contains 48 original artist sketches to colour for fun and relaxation. Now Laurel Birch is quite well known. This book has a lovely glossy cover. It's quite reflective with the light and it's the normal sort of size that we expect, about 21 centimetres by about 28 centimetres, perfect A4 sizing. On the inside cover we have some beautiful illustrations or, or coloured images and if you're familiar with her artwork that style is uh, something that you'll probably recognise. Now we've got a nice little title page here with a simple little colouring on it to colour in. The paper quality is actually quite good, it's white um, and it is thin, but it's actually about a medium weight quality, so it's quite good. But always remember to pop something in between the pages if you're heavy handed with your pencils or if you like to use markers. So I've got this gorgeous little illustration and this lovely little quote here. And as we move in, we can see the rest of the illustrations. Now this one is just adorable. I could imagine this cut out and made into a card. It's just beautiful. I'm just going to turn it around so that you can see it in um, a landscape view. It's really beautiful. I love her artwork. It's sort of really different from um, other things that we're seeing, so it's always nice to have something different. And we we'll see we've already got the pre-printing here of the black and her artwork is very vibrant and colourful so having some pre-printing there in black shouldn't make any uh, difference to you from a colour choice because of if you look up the way her illustrations are and her artwork um, it'll make sort of sense. Here we've got this a lovely image here. I'm just going to flip through so that you can see it. So the images are a mix of portrait and landscape style and some images are more simple to colour than others and this is the sort of book if you're really good at blending and whatnot you can really bring it to life and if you're like me and you just like to have a bit of fun and colour then it's also good as well because you can just colour in solid and not have to worry about all the other technical things that you could do so it's a good book for all skill levels. I like the uh, mix of quotes on here I think they're really quite fun something to cheer you up I also like the way that it's laid out because it's just something different with this big space between the spine and this big space over here on the page. And as I said earlier, I could just imagine this sort of framed or made into a note card um, because of the way it's used on the paper. And these are just really different from other things that I've been looking at lately. You notice that each of these pieces of artwork have been signed somewhere and she's very unobtrusive about it. It's this very tiny signature there. And these are four different images I put onto the one page. So quite cute. I'm not sure if I'm a fan of the smaller illustrations um, all presented on the one page. 
I don't know, I'd have to think about that and sort of see, you know, I'm always looking to reuse things and what else I could do with it and I'm not sure that I like that. Although I could imagine that this uh, lion, if I cut him up and put him on a coaster, I'd be pretty happy with that. So this is much more my style of a full page, but you know, those smaller illustrations might be good for practicing on. One thing I've noticed about this illustration is, and I don't know whether it's a printing error or a design area, but down here there is, and on the other side, there's an actual line running through the work. So, uh, if you can just see where my finger is. So I'm not too happy about that. I think that would colour out. It comes right up to the top there. Uh, so you can see that line and it's joining on the other side. Now, on the other side of the paper, see that line there? So, I mean, if you're framing it, it'd be okay, be hidden with the frame. But um, I don't know if that's going to colour out. If you put a background on it, it should be okay. But the thing that I don't like uh, about this page, I love the illustration. I'm just really disappointed that these birdies up the top have had their heads chopped off. Um, I really hate it when elements are missing from an illustration, unless it sort of goes towards the artwork. Um, so I'm really not happy about the birdies being missing. I think the picture could have been rescaled. And down here where we've got all these elements missing and down the side. So that illustration to me is a lost opportunity. It could have been something so much better. Now, um, there still is a faint line down the side here that I can see. And perhaps it's just a printing error in this book. The problem with printing is, you know, it's just so hard to have a quality control over a number of copies and it's not the fault of the artist and, you know, it's even not the fault of the printers. It's just really a difficult task to maintain quality on each of the pages in a book. So, you know, I don't take it too badly um, and usually there's something that you can do to cover it up. And on the back here we've got a palette of colours that Laurel Birch likes to use in her designs. Uh, so if you wanted to keep to her style then you could uh, use her colour palette which was nice of them to include. But of course you know you're free, it's your colouring book, it, you're free to do whatever you want with it and uh, make up whatever you want colour wise. But they do look fantastic when they're in these vibrant colours but of course you can um, you know, do whatever you want. So I hope you guys have enjoyed this colouring book review of the art of Laurel Birch and I look forward to sharing another colouring book review with you later. In the meantime, happy colouring.